Suppose we're tracking the position of something over time. It might be the rotational orientation of that pointer on the potentiometer, or it might be a linear motion back and forth in one axis. But it will change with time, and this pen, it'll always have a position. We may not know what it is. So the position as a function of time exists. If we knew what it was, we could use analytical calculus to find out what the velocity was. Because the velocity is just the derivative of position with time. So if we knew what that function was and we were good at calculus, we could just do a derivative and find out. Likewise, if we knew the velocity, because we took the derivative of the position, we could find the acceleration by taking the derivative of the velocity. Derivative of velocity with time. Generally, we won't know this position function as a nice analytical function that we can do pencil and paper mathematics with. So we're going to have to approximate these derivatives, which is a lot easier for those of us who aren't very good at calculus. So that derivative will be approximately the amount that the position changes divided by the length of time it took to change. This derivative will be approximately the amount that the velocity changes by and the time that the velocity took to change. And those we can estimate based on measurements. So suppose we're making analog readings of position from a potentiometer or some other measurement device. Then that'll tell us what the position is anytime we go and make a measurement. The micros function will tell us what the time was when we made that position measurement. So if the system was in that position there, we could do an analog reading and find out that the position was that at time one, and that time one was whatever micros said at that time. Now all we know is a position and a time, so we really can't even make a guess at velocity and acceleration. But if we wait a little while and take another position measurement, then we can get the position at some later time too, and the time when we took that second measurement. Now we can make an estimate of what the velocity is. The velocity at time two is approximately equal to what the position is now at time two minus what the position was before at time one, divided by the difference in time, t2 minus t1. <clears throat> so we now know the position and we've got an estimate of what the velocity is. So if we go on and take another position measurement, then we've got p3 and we know what time we took that. T3, we can estimate V3 as approximately equal to P3 minus P2 divided by T3 minus T2, and that'll give us a reasonable estimate of what the velocity was at that time. And these are just estimates of the derivatives at these different times. So what we're doing is we're approximating that as the velocity, a straight line there. And we're approximating here a straight line between those two points as representing the velocity. That's what we're doing when we make this calculation. Now, if you take a numerical methods course like Math 272, you can do way more sophisticated differencing to get a better estimate. But these are pretty good estimates. <clears throat> now... We can estimate the acceleration at this time as being approximately equal to, well, the velocity at time 3 minus the velocity at time 2 divided by whatever T3 minus T2 was. So that's delta V over delta T. 
giving us an approximate value for the acceleration. And if we then go on and make another measurement a little bit later in time, we can get a position at time, time 4 and the actual time in microseconds at 4. We can get a velocity estimate at 4 from the difference between those two positions. And we can get an acceleration estimate at 4 from the difference between those two velocities. Now, this is showing things changing pretty quickly as we go between samples. We're not taking very many samples. So this delta P over delta T is kind of a crude estimator. But if we push the samples really close together so that things weren't changing very much, these could be really good estimators. Except, and there's always a catch, the closer we push these together in time, the less certain we are how much time has actually gone by. In fact, in the extreme, if they got to be inside four microseconds of each other, we really don't know what we'd get here. We might sometimes get the same value back from micros. So our time is going to be uncertain. In addition, the closer they are together in time, the smaller the difference is going to be between two positions. And we've got some uncertainty in our position measurements. They've got noise on them and there's discretization error. So we might have quite a large error here in that, in that difference. Now if we take this one substantially in error and that one substantially in error and divide them by each other, we'll get a velocity estimate that will be really in error. And that could be a problem. So we're going to have to be careful not to push them too close together in time. And we'll test out that idea by writing some code on the Arduino.